Good morning, church. Good to see you all again this morning. Uh, this is Sunday morning, uh, April 19th, and this makes our fourth video church service through the usage of YouTube, and I pray it's been a real blessing to you. I know it has been to me as I've been able to stay home and worship. Uh, as we know right now, Governor Cuomo has said that the current ban, which went into effect initially on um, uh, March 16th, is going to continue down through until April 29th. Uh, so we've got at least a few more weeks of this, and then they'll only be lessening the ban in stages. So how soon we'll be able to truly gather together as an entire congregation is yet to be seen. That's something that will come about. We're praying it comes about sooner rather than later, but we do have to wait for all of that to work its way through. Um, it's a time, though, for us to reflect back, as we did Wednesday night when we were in Bible study. Uh, Pastor Jim reminded us that in times like this, and especially as we consider the subject of faith, that our faith is not an abstract thing. Our faith isn't rooted in whether or not things get better. Uh, our faith isn't in the economy bouncing back, uh, work coming back, uh, normalcy to our regular routines in life, although we all want to see that, and it's reasonable to pray for that and, and to want to see that come about. Those are things we might hope for uh, and desire and certainly are worth our prayers and bringing before God the Father. But faith itself is rooted in the person and the character of Christ. It's rooted in trusting him. That's the real issue. Do we trust his character? Do we trust who he is? And hasn't he proven himself trustworthy in all that he's done for us? Uh, in coming and living his righteous life and dying on the cross on our behalf, in rising from the dead then what won't he do for us for the eternal good of our souls? And let's face it, that's the key point. Not what happens just in this life, but the eternity that's yet to be ours and how he's preparing us for that, even working in us now to conform us to the image of Christ that will be finished on the day when he returns. But even in the midst of this crisis, we can see his mercy all around us, can't we? We see how he has worked in his common grace through those who don't know Christ, but have ministered powerfully and faithfully to so many who have been ill and even those who, before they perished. He's been good to us, and he remains good to us. I'm grateful as I make this recording right now how our own church family doesn't seem to have been touched directly by this. It could have been much, much worse. And God's common grace and mercy to us has been manifested in the way that we've not suffered what we could have. Certainly this whole plague could have been much, much, much worse, multiplied times worse. And instead, he has kept us. He's been very merciful. And certainly we pray that there will be vaccines forthcoming and there will be uh, more of a show of curve in the lowering of infections, certainly the lowering of the death rate. Uh, but he has been merciful to us in this, and we look to him because he is merciful. He doesn't just show mercy. That's his very nature. Now, So going back and speaking about that issue of faith and faith being in him, this Wednesday night when we were doing our Bible study, Pastor Jim reminded us of that so much. And then as I was reading this week and going through the hymns that were collected by J.C. Ryle in the 1800s, one really stuck out to me as I read it today. And let me share it with you because it goes to the heart of this same thought and should prepare us for worship this morning. So I want to go through this and read these lyrics to you, and then we'll pray together. Listen to this. Faith is a living power from heaven which grasps the promise God has given, a trust that cannot be o'erthrown, securely fixed on Christ alone. Faith finds in Christ whate'er we need 
to save and strengthen, guide and feed. Strong in his grace, it joys to share his cross in hope, his crown to wear. Faith to the conscience whispers peace and bids the mourners sighing cease. By faith the children's right we claim and call upon our Father's name. Faith feels the Spirit's kindling breath in love and hope that conquer death. Faith brings us to delight in God and blesses in his smiting rod. Such faith in us, O God, implant, and to our prayers thy favor grant. In Jesus Christ, thy saving Son, who is our fount of health alone. In him may every trusting soul press onward to the heavenly goal, the blessedness no foes destroy, eternal love and light and joy. I especially loved that fifth stanza where the hymnist prays, such faith in us, O God, implant in Jesus Christ, thy saving son, who is our fount of health alone. We ask him to give us that faith and to make sure it's anchored and fixed on Christ in these times. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we come to this time of worship this morning, I'm so grateful that we can fix our hope and our trust in your faithfulness. Your faithfulness sent Christ in due time. Your faithfulness preserved the race until the day he would come. Your faithfulness preserved your word for us, not only prior to his coming, but in the centuries since. Your faithfulness is the anchor upon which we, we depend in our prayers, knowing that you hear and that you answer, that you're not frivolous, that you don't go back and forth, but we can trust you. Your faithfulness, the character of who you are in the very core of your being. Faithfulness allowed Jesus to go to the cross in our stead. Your faithfulness saw our sins attached to him and his righteousness imputed to us. Your faithfulness raised him from the dead and your faithfulness sent the Holy Spirit after his ascension on high. Your faithfulness will keep us in the intervening years. And your faithfulness will send Jesus again and fulfill the promise of resurrection and eternal life. Oh, we thank you for that today. Our faith is in you, O oh God. In your character. In who you are in Christ our Savior and Lord. And as we worship this morning, I pray that will truly be impressed and refreshed in the hearts of everyone who's joining with us. That if they're caught in fear and, and if the noise of all that the world is shouting at them right now in the current crisis is so distracting, Lord, let them... Move out of that place and let the light of your truth shine in their hearts and minds and burn off the fog and tune out the noise and fix our hearts and minds afresh on Jesus Christ, our faithful, loving, merciful, gracious substitute, Christ and King. In what's sung in what's prayed, in our reciting the creed together, and especially in the breaking of your word. Nourish our souls on he who is the bread of life. And we pray those things in his precious name. Amen and amen. Amen, my friends. <laughs>